In this video, we will talk about static pods in the Kubernetes cluster. What is their purpose and how they are run? Till now, we have covered regular pods, which have either been run directly or through a controller like a deployment. These regular pods are managed by the Kubernetes control plane. Static pods are managed directly by the kubelet daemon on a specific node without the API server observing them. Static pods are always bound on one kubelet on a specific node. The kubelet watches each static pod and restarts it if it crashes. The kubelet automatically tries to create a mirror pod on the Kubernetes API server for each static pod. This means that the pods running on a node are visible on the API server but cannot be controlled from there. In our cluster, we have two worker nodes. Let's run static pods on a particular node. For that, we will SSH directly to that node. I will connect to it as root user. If you remember, we had used kubeadm for the cluster creation. kubeadm uses a limited set of constants values for well-known paths and file names. Slash etc slash kubernetes slash manifest is the path where kubelet should look for static pod manifest. The kubelet watches this directory for pods to create. And the running kubelet periodically scans the configured directory for changes and adds or removes pods as files appear or disappear in this directory. For this video, I want to run a nginx container inside the static pod. For that, under the slash etc slash kubernetes slash manifest file, let's create a YAML file. It will run a pod using the nginx latest image and the pod will be created in the viz space namespace. Once the file is saved, within few seconds, the pod should automatically spin up. We can check this by running docker ps command on the worker node. This command will basically list the running containers in the container runtime. As we can see, the container has been running for the last 26 seconds. I have switched to the master node now and I will run the kubectl get pods command. And here we can see the mirror pod on the API server. And we can check that this pod is running on the worker node. If we try to use kubectl to delete the mirror pod from the API server, the kubelet doesn't remove the static pod. Let's try it. And we can see that the pod gets recreated again. On the master node, the age of the pod is shown as 5 seconds. Whereas the actual age of the docker pod is around 2 minutes. The difference in the created time is because the mirror pod gets recreated on the API server. On the worker node where the kubelet is running, we can try to stop the docker container manually. I'll run the docker stop command. And I'll provide the container ID. So basically there are two containers created for the pod. I'll try to stop both of them. And in few seconds if I check again, we can see that both the containers have been restarted. As soon as the kubelet notices that the container is not running, it restarts it. The way to delete the static pod is to remove the YAML file from the manifest directory. If I delete the YAML file itself, in few seconds the kubelet should stop the pod automatically. And here we can see that the container has been removed. Let's verify the same from the master node as well. And from the API server as well, the static pod has been removed. That's it about the static pods. To summarize, 
Static pods are created and managed by the Kubelet daemon on a specific node. Control plane is not involved in the life cycle of static pod. For more details check the link in the description. Learn with Witz Labs. Success certified.